Hey guys, it's Jamie here and I have some Amazon packaging already cut into two pieces of A5, just slightly bigger than A5, because that's the journal page size I'm doing, and a spine. In centimetres is six, in inches it's about just under two and a half. What we're going to do is make a very simple journal for the May challenge. As you can see, my spine is shorter than the book cover. I will recut it. I often end up having to recut things. I will be taking just some plain sticky tape, quite large, leaving a small gap either side because we want the we want the covers to be able to turn easily, and then running the sticky tape straight down it may move slightly but hopefully not too much cut that one off we will get move that in a minute that has moved slightly and then again same idea piece of sticky tape straight down tape i've used is just a double-sided household diy tape i will be taping the other side as well as you can see will now open and close easily as will that one and hopefully meet not too bad on the gaps that one is slightly out when we look let's try and get it more in a line with this one on gap size simply grabbing the tape again and doing the same again the first thing i'm going to do is i've mixed some normal white pva school glue with some water and I'll be using that to put scraps over the whole of the inside and outside cover. Leaving edges so I can wrap it over the edges. I don't mind which way the pieces go as long as I have that ability to wrap. Because I'm going to be doing treatments on top of this, I'm not looking for anything matchy-matchy. I don't mind those white print edges on there. I don't mind if pieces are torn. I don't care how big they are, how small they are. None of that matters. I'm going to cover this outside. Now it's dried, I've given it a rub over with talcum powder to take some of the stickiness off. This bit needs re-sticking. That will happen with this method. However, what you're going to see now is the inside cover is so easy to do because you can just pull things over. You don't have to do massive hospital corner folding. You might need to cut a little away but it's not it's not always essential i just cut like that to get around that corner and you have very very easy fold over and then you just cover the inside now this is all dry and i've rubbed over it with some baby powder to make sure that all the stickiness is removed i'm going to take the white gesso and dry brush it over this And then when we want it a bit thicker, if we want it a bit thicker, you can either use the brush or you can get a palleted effect. I'm going to go a bit thicker where the colours are stronger. And also this gives you texture without using texture paste. Though you can if you want use texture paste. Just don't want to do a bit more on this side. They will do the same on the inside. Yeah, there's a bit too much grooving all in one place, so I'm just going to brush a bit out and leave some other bits of grooving on there. Now everything is really dry. I'm going to grab the Distress Oxide Vintage Photo and come in on this around the edges particularly. I'm going to bring some green in as well. This is the peel paint. Then I'm going to grab water. Staining should chase a little bit down all the tears that are on this paper. Might need to move it around a bit. Dry it off, put a few layers on. For a stronger effect you want to do this with watercolour or acrylic. This staining you're going to keep going all over 
outside cover, inside cover, until you have achieved a look you're happy with. I have coffee splattered and Distress Oxide inked this a lot to get to this colour. You can still see some of the print behind it from the scrap paper. You can also see that it's taken on very, very different tones. To put this down, this is not as protective as this is, and I will want to fade this into this background. So to put this down, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to attach it and then go over this area with some tissue. I will show you me doing that now. I have a lot of beginners in group who are nervous to start junk journaling. So I'm going to do a very simple binding and a very simple cover in that you can get results without having to be a perfectionist. In fact, it helps if you're not a perfectionist. Now I'm going to cover this, which puts a protective coat on the front of here. It does also make it a little bit shiny, but I'll probably do it all over. Here, for example, I have a paper napkin where layers have been pulled apart, putting another layer on, only because it dried out. I'll be tearing at this. It doesn't matter that I'm going to get a wrinkly result because that will fit with the background, which is why I said wrinkles in the background will not be particularly important. I'm going to brush over the top gently. I have already ripped this a little bit, but it doesn't matter. It all adds to that aged grungy look. And we let that dry. What I've decided is this can cope with two signatures because it's quite a wide spine. I am going to have to reinforce this. Normally I put so many layers on this it doesn't need extra but this seems a little weak so I'm going to reinforce it on the inside. Here I'm going to put some eyelets into these two holes. I'm just going to use my cropper dial to do that. I'm hoping I remember how to do that. On the cropper dial you actually have like a eyelet setter. You need to get it into position and push down. I'm hoping I've got it to split reasonably well. An eyelet set and you're going to do that on all four. All we're going to do to create the signature is put an elastic cord through each hole, top to bottom. And then on this side, tie it quite tightly. That does. And then you can or cannot, it's up to you, cut those down. When you do papers with this type of closure, you need to do papers shorter than those holes. This is just a rough demonstration. If you were to put that in, it's going to be too wide for that gap, but it doesn't sit quite so nicely in it. So I would take that border off and then it might sit a bit better. You would have two signatures that you can decorate the papers and put them in as you've done them, as opposed to fixing them in place either decorated in advance or fixing them in place and having to decorate them afterwards, which can get awkward, particularly if you're doing a bigger journal. With this, I was going to add some paint and do some other things, but I am actually quite happy with how that turned out. In the end, that gives it that crackled old look anyway, so I don't think there's anything extra to do to that. You could add a journal kind of name nameplate or something on here if you wanted to. So it'll have detail in the front cover, it will have detail that's permanent in the back cover, but the signatures will be removable. And that is the beginning of the May journal, and mine is the Greatest Showman type theme. If you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think of these style of signatures in the comments below. Your subscription is always welcome and I will see you next time.